Today's video, we'll be looking at the Tandy 1000 EX. We review old technology from games to all PCs and don't forget the doll. We deliver all generation electronics. We cover it all. So here's our Tandy 1000 EX talk about the machine itself a little bit after we get out of the box so yeah I do have this box I generally don't really like having stuff boxed because a lot of times if I'm going to use it I take it out of the box and I set it up and I'm using it and then like I have to I can't just throw the box away so then I have to like store the box somewhere it's a pain I, I prefer to have stuff unboxed but I know there's people out there that, that love the box stuff and it is kind of cool uh, it is pretty like beat up looks like there's some watermarks I picked this thing up at a yard sale believe it or not maybe like 10 years ago um, looking here at the tag it looks like this was originally sent to Applewood Shipping Center uh, Radio Shack I think that's South Carolina so uh, I think this was originally a uh, East Coast Tandy 1000 EX. So um, let's take it out and then we'll talk about the Tandy 1000 EX a little bit. And here we have the Tandy 1000 EX out of the box. As you can see it is a like kind of an all-in-one keyboard uh, form factor type of personal computer. These were pretty popular in the 80s. We had the Apple II, we had of course the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. So this style was pretty popular. Also the Amiga 500. And usually it was reserved for the budget versions of computers. And the Tandy 1000 indeed was kind of meant as a more of a budget friendly sort of IBM compatible uh, Tandy. Of course it is a full Tandy 1000 so it has the Tandy sound and graphics, the uh, 16 color graphics. And I don't really think there's any compatibility. This will play anything, you know, a regular Tandy 1000 uh, will play. For those of you who aren't aware, I do have a blog. Uh, most of the computers I feature on the channel, I also have a blog entry on. And the, I, the blog started before the channel. And actually the first article I did on the blog was on this, the Tandy 1000 EX. And at the time I had an HX. Now the HX is long gone, but I held on to this EX for a while. And this was actually... And this was like my main IBM compatible for early games. This was my main Tandy 1000 I used for quite some time. And I only kind of retired it after I ended up uh, setting up, getting and setting up my Tandy 1000 SX and my Tandy 1000 RL. I just prefer the expandability. I prefer the desktop factor and the expandability. But the EX is still quite a capable machine. So just like the SX, we do have an 8088 in here. It's running at 7.16 megahertz, I believe, but it will downclock to 4.77 megahertz. So you get full compatibility with um, older games that demand that 4.77 megahertz speed. The keyboard is, I mean, I'm not a keyboard snob or a keyboard expert, but you know, for a built-in keyboard, it's, it's fine. I don't have any problems with it. Uh, power, numlock, uh, caps lock here. It, it's pretty large, it's pretty hefty. I mean it's all plastic but it does feel more quality. It does feel more like solid and substantial than say an Apple II in my opinion. So uh, I think it's pretty well built for being like a quote-unquote budget Tandy. So if we look on the side there we do have a 360k uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drive so this is the medium that most of your games from this time period would have came on. Uh, you can also get an external 720K uh, floppy drive. I actually have one boxed somewhere around here, but as I've mentioned a hundred times, I am still in the process of unpacking and setting up this room, and it's somewhere in that closet in a box somewhere. So <laughs> I'm not going to dig it out for this video, but they do exist if you want to load games from the 720k uh, floppy variety. We have a headphone jack here. I'm sure you could hook up speakers to that as well if you'd like. And a nice little volume knob, although it is like kind of flush with the bottom. So in certain situations like this one, it could be a little difficult to turn that knob. And then we have two, we've like Tandy style um, joystick ports there. So 
uh, let's spin it around and take a look at the back. All right, and here we have the back of the machine. As you can see here, it's a fairly slim line machine. Uh, there is the tag there, Tandy 1000 EX. And right there we have the edge connector type printer port. And then right there we have the external drive. That's what we were talking about where you could hook up an external floppy drive. You have these little dongle thingies uh, connectors as well. Then we have video. Uh, so that would be your composite out. So that's nice that it kept the composite out. And then we have a jack for your RGB monitor, which most likely you would be uh, using a CGA monitor, probably one of the Tandy variety, like a CM5, or if you're really fancy, a CM11. Of all the monitors I have, I have still not come across the CM11, but maybe one day, maybe one day. <laughs> so, and then right here we have um, three slots here for expansion slots. Now the expansion on this is interesting because it is uh, electronically or electrically, however you want to say it, uh, compatible with ISA. But it's in this kind of strange form factor we'll look at in a minute. So technically it's just ISA, it's just in a different form factor. And I have seen third parties and like recent, uh, you know, hobbyists actually make cards for this, like special cards and adapters for like compact flash hard drives and things like that. I don't have uh, anything fancy like that uh, since, you know, any money I would have spent on upgrading my Tandy 1000 would have went to the SX uh, since I don't really use this guy anymore. Uh, but if you're, if you have one of these and you'd like to upgrade it, they do make like compact flash uh, in this sort of weird ISA different kind of Tandy 1000 EX form factor. I believe it has a name, but it's not coming to me at the moment. But uh, let's take a look at this. So gaining access to this is very simple. This just slides right off. And there you go. Now I do believe there is 256K of memory uh, built into these machines. And these cards kind of, as you can see, they stack on top of each other. This is, I don't know, oh, this, I think this is a network card. Um, I don't really network on these old machines. Or it's like, it's an old modem, I believe. Uh, but you can see there's the connector there. So let me remove this, and then I believe they have a card installed underneath it. So here's the card we had underneath. One thing about these machines, if you want access to the bottom card, you're going to have to remove the upper cards, obviously. And as you can see here, um, well, actually, I was wrong. This card doesn't have a connector. It was, it has a connector to connect, but not an additional. It's the, the bottom card. Uh, it actually has two. So this would be connected to the board, and then you could connect one above it, and then one on top. So I guess there is a certain order you have to put these cards. This one's pretty important, though. This is an official Tandy one, uh, but this is the extra memory. So I believe this one expands it to the full 640K. I believe it also adds a DMA controller. So uh, this is kind of a significant upgrade to your machine. If you have one of these EXs, you probably want to search out one of these memory upgrades and uh, DMA controller. I just removed that last card here. You can see there's like a metal is shielding. Um, there's the connector for the floppy drive. Not much. Made in USA 1986. Um, I'm not really going to bother taking this top off and looking in there. I don't think there's anything uh, super interesting. I don't even know. I, I wonder if these have a slot for an 8087 processor. I'm not, I'm not sure if they do. I'll have to... I'm going to check... Uh, I'm going to have to look online at that. That's interesting, but I don't think I've, I've never installed anything uh, in this machine except for the expansion card. So, But anyways, we're going to button her up, and um, we'll see if this thing fires up. I haven't run this computer in like eight years now, so uh, hopefully it still works. We'll hook her up to like a Tandy CM5, and uh, we'll find out. All right, so we have our monitor on here, and just a couple corrections. Um... For some reason, I couldn't, on a quick check on Google, I couldn't find anything that even specifically said if this had or didn't have a socket for a math coprocessor, but I'm going to uh, make a wild guess here and say there isn't a socket for a math coprocessor. Um, I also learned that right below that little, that metal sheet when we took out the last uh, expansion card, if you remove that, the processor is there, and it is socketed, and it is possible to replace it with something like an NEC V20 if you want a little bump in speed. Also, the name of those expansion cards are plus cards, or 
ISA Plus or Plus expansion cards, but Plus is what they call them. So um, let's fire this guy up. Now I'm a little curious about the monitor because, well, <laughs> this monitor has not been treated kindly recently, and I will be surprised if it still works. So. Um, yeah, this is going to be interesting. We'll see if any of this still works. Um, all right. So I'm going to power on the monitor here. Maybe I should turn this... All right, we'll turn that light out and make it a little bit easier for to see. So let's see if it even powers on. We'll see if it works. I know this thing... Oh, wow, it's staying on. It's actually kind of loose. Um, whoop. Okay, well, power on. Now let's see if the EX will power on. Okay, well that's good. Um, I'm actually surprised it's working. I I wasn't sure. All right. Ooh, 640K. That's good. I am I'm impressed. This monitor. Uh, wow. So I don't think it's gonna do. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's anything on this machine that's like built into ROM or anything so I yeah it's gonna check the disk and then yeah we're coming up this all looks good it, it's working fine I'm, I'm pretty happy um, so I don't think it's gonna do anything I think we have to load like DOS from a disk on this machine or have a booter game installed so I'll poke around and see if I have anything but this is good this actually looks pretty nice to be honest <laughs> so for uh, for the abuse this monitor has been through recently and then just sitting in storage forever and the machine too it's just boot up yeah insert diskette uh, strike any key when ready so yeah this is working as it should so that is promising so let's find a game or something and um, yeah let's take a look at it all right so I found a DOS boot disk and we're in DOS and uh, let's see, I've got Airborne Ranger here, so this should support Tandy sound and graphics. Let's see if it loads the game up. Alright, select graphics mode. We want Tandy 1000. Let me straighten this out. Tandy 1000. <laughs> I barely touched the key. Um, see I'm sure the computer is more than capable of running this game I'm just curious if the disc is I've, I've had this game for years and I've never actually uh, tried running it so I'm curious if it's good so far so good all right yep that looks good I mean we've got our Tandy 16 colors and uh, yeah everything looks good There we go, Airborne Ranger. Um, I used to play this game a lot. Yeah, there you go. I used to play this game a lot on my uh, Commodore 64. I've never played any other version, but I'm assuming that the like DOS version is is pretty similar to the Commodore uh, version. Yeah, so here you go. You get like an overview of the field, and then. I think there's a certain spot where it allows you to parachute out and then you have to make your way through all this. There's like pillboxes and enemy troops. It's nothing too crazy. Um, I don't remember there being like tanks and stuff like that. Just a lot of soldiers and pillboxes. There you go. And I think you could control, yeah, you could control your parachute a little bit. So where you land. And then... Yep, and then you got to make your way all the way up, and your objective is at the very top. So, pretty simple game, but I remember playing this a lot as a kid. It was it was pretty fun. Okay, yeah, I'm probably gonna die here pretty quick. Ah, the keyboard it's rotating, but does it have standard? Okay, I don't even know how to move. Okay, there's okay. Um, okay, I see. How do I get us? Yeah, I, <laughs> I think I, I think there was a landmine. I'm dead, right? I'm dead, right? Yeah, I'm dead. 
Okay, so yeah, that was quick. Um, but yeah, there's Airborne Ranger. And we'll uh, finish up this with the greatest uh, river patrol gunboat simulator game ever made, Gunboat. You can experience it here on something like the Tandy 1000 or your IBM compatible, but it's also available on the Turbo Graphics, and it is one of the greatest games ever created. So what do I think of the Tandy 1000 EX, and do I know the displacement in tons of a mini armor troop carrier? No. <laughs> but I like the Tandy 1000 EX. For a quote-unquote budget Tandy 1000, it's actually quite capable, and, and I wouldn't put my nose up at one, you know, in favor of getting the SX or something like the more desktop model ones. Now, I prefer the desktop model ones. I prefer the expandability, and they are a little bit more capable overall. They're easier to expand, obviously. They have like a slot for a math coprocessor. There's just more you can do, but the EX is no slouch. If you're just gaming, you're really not going to miss out much getting the EX over, say, the, the SX. Uh, this is perfectly fine. This is going to suit like 99% of your gaming needs, really. Uh, the built-in keyboards, it's pretty nice. Again, I'm not like a keyboard connoisseur or a keyboard snob, so it feels fine to me. Solid construction. It has most of what you need built in. It has your full Tandy, you know, Tandy color, 16 color. It has your Tandy sound. It's a nice kind of compact system. You might have an issue with, like, you only have the one disk drive that's a, a five and a quarter inch, but like I said, you can find external drives, although... Uh, I'm sure they're a little bit expensive these days. So there is that. Getting the external uh, 720K drive might be a little pricey. But again, you can get like a, a CF adapter uh, hard drive card and things like that these days anyway. So you can probably use that to like transfer games and stuff. So yeah, I, I definitely would recommend this little machine. Like I said, for a budget machine, uh, budget Tandy 1000. It's it's really nice, and uh, yeah, I I completely endorse it. And uh, if you see one of these, I you want a Tandy 1000, I definitely would pick these up. I would definitely go for it. Uh, I wouldn't concern yourself too much with waiting for one of the desktop models if uh, if what you're looking for is you know one of the earlier 8088 based Tandy 1000s. Obviously, there's faster ones later with 286s and whatnot. Um, but yeah, this is this is a fine one. This will suit most of your needs, and it's built really well, and I like it. So uh, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or concerns or anything like that, let me know in the comments. And uh, let me know, do you know the displacement in tons of a mini armored troop carrier? It's a kind of a weird question for a game about gunboats. You'd think it would be a more gunboat-oriented uh, question. Also, it's not very specific, a mini armored troop carrier. I mean, there's many types of mini armored troop carriers, so that's kind of vague. I'm sure the answer is probably somewhere in the gunboat manual, the greatest game based on gunboats ever created. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video, and thank you for watching. Oh, I just love playing gunboat. Oh, uh, if you've noticed this monitor looks a little different, that's because it is. I actually have a second uh, CM5 I just wanted to show you guys. And it is also boxed, and it is, like, immaculate. Uh, like, there's no discoloration. Everything, yeah, everything is, is really nice. Oh, hey, did, did the screen should jiggle? Yes. Uh, but <laughs> as far as cosmetically, uh, this CM5 is, is, is beautiful. Um, colors, it, it looks good. I mean, it works fine. Um, it's been a long time. Um, can you believe I used to... I had the TurboGrafx-16 version of this, but can you believe I was excited to come home from school and play this game? I mean, it was only once. It was like one day, and then I, I, I played it for a few hours, and then I was like, hmm. And then I was no longer excited to play this game, but... Yeah, there was actually a point in my life, there was actually a point in history that somebody was excited to come home from school and play Gunboat. 
Ah, how do I even fire the guns? Raid suspended. How no, no, I just wanted to shoot the guns. Whatever. Oh, I see. It's enter. You it's it's enter. You just can't tap it. You have to like hold it in, and then they start firing. Oh boy, that's terrible. This computer might be a little bit too slow for this game, actually. Okay. See you in the next video, guys.